let's see how we can download and process any Hugging Face dataset, be it on Google Colab or on your local machine, the same code will work. For this example, I will download this LLM pre-training dataset that's very new and very good and has 24 trillion tokens. So downloading it is very uh, easy, it's just one line of code. So after that, you don't need to even watch, but we will do some other processing like splitting it into sentences and then embedding each sentence into vector embedding. But the main tutorial is just downloading it, it's just here, very simple. Link to this Google Colab is below the video. So first, make sure to install and update datasets Hugging Face Hub and this dependency. You need to also go to Hugging Face and to your profile and access tokens here. And you need to create a new access token. I think it's simple. And then uh, click this key and here Hugging Face token like this and uh, paste it here and just enable it for this uh, notebook. So we will use this new dataset that's called Essential Web Dataset. It's released like a few days ago. It's very good for pre-training. I have a video here you can watch. Uh, we will download that dataset. So first I will just download uh, three documents. It's very fast so I can test uh, very uh, few documents. And then we have this try. So you can just run this block of code. I have dataset is equal to load dataset and then you can search for Google for this or you can copy it or you can just run uh, my notebook here. Split train streaming true. You need this to be able to download just a few documents. Otherwise, it will be downloading for an entire day or more days. It's a huge data set. And then you need this trust remote code true. Uh, I don't know if it will work without this. Maybe it will. And then take a number of documents or just three documents to download. And after it's downloaded and you see it actually needs quite a bit of time to launch to start but after it has started it will download pretty quickly uh, in google collab yeah you see here it was starting like uh, for a few minutes and then it downloaded all three so okay so uh, then we need to convert this to list because data set is just an iterator there is no data set uh, materialized so just an iterator so if i print data set you see it just iterator that has these list of features but there is no data set so we need to convert to list and now there is data set here so if we print this partial data set you see that we actually have all three uh, array of all three uh, documents and there is like text, there is ID, you see here text, and then this is the text of the actual document. So besides text, we have other fields like category, taxonomy, here label, and all this good stuff. So you can actually use this, these fields to filter data, to get only mathematics, only medicine. And there is a lot more ways of filtering, so you can watch my video here. Or you can also search on Google. But my video doesn't show how to filter, it just shows generally about uh, about the dataset for 10 minutes, reading the paper. Also, uh, we, you don't need to convert it to list. You can just say for doc in dataset print document. So this will now materialize each of the documents. Because this is just an iterator. And now you see. So if we go back up, uh, we will convert this to data frame, this data set. And so if I go down and print data frame, you see here, we have uh, this ID text metadata. So it has URL and stuff. And then it has some more metadata. Also, what you can do is instead of saying take number of elements, you can also add skip. So if you want to not download the first three, so you can skip three and download like, sorry, like next uh, four, skip three, download four. So this is some basic ways of downloading data. Uh, we will keep, keep this for now. So I think I will just use uh, this one on top and download more than three documents.
oh my god guys i spent like two three hours trying to resolve cuda dependencies trying to install this uh, fair sequence um, like four different github repositories all have different python dependencies it's crazy but now i'm a lot better at resolving these dependencies so but i think we will do it in a different way so we need to split our text into sentences so we will use this uh, repository it's just gonna be pip install this uh, wtp split whatever and uh, this is using this sat segments anything text and where is the point self-supervised multilingual punctual agnostic sentence segmentation so these are the papers uh, but we will not read them now and this sat or sat is very good we we have this text uh, they are the same don't believe me let's watch it again and it will split into they are the same don't believe me let's watch it again so it's very good at splitting uh, text into sentences and these could be our concepts that we will train our language model on so this is one concept they are the same second concept these are we're gonna use these instead of tokens so we will just run this in our Google Colab and let's check this code to see how it works. So first we will load this sat instantiated. I will comment out this CUDA line for now because I want to do it on CPU. So we can say sat split. This is a test. This is another test. It looks like it's uh, taking some time to load it and now it's already done these two you see it's here now so they have these three versions the first version is sat 3l the second is sat 3l sm i'm guessing small and then uh, we also can specify these like parameters like language so let me run and see what each of them does so the first one sat split will just create two sentences what if I put a small letter here? Now it's just one sentence. That's not necessarily bad. So this can also maybe be looked as one sentence. But this sat small, if I put a lower letter here, it will actually split it. So maybe this is actually even better. Also, it will split if it's a capital letter here, but that's expected. And then this adapted, will not split on small letters, so I guess this is uh, for some custom LoRa modules and stuff. So I think we will be using the second one that splits even on small letters if the sentence makes sense. You see here, but even the first one, if I say I went to store, I went to sleep, it's obviously should be like, a, uh, this, these are two different sentences, so it did split correctly. So if you need general sentence segmentation model, use this dash SM. And we can also use this 3L, set 3L, because it has a good trade-off between speed and performance. So we will use then this one, set 3L SM, which was the second one that I was showing you. But there are a bunch of these other models as well. And L means layers. So I think the more layers, uh, 12 layers, the performance will be higher, but also it will be slower. So I guess we will use this 3LSM. So let's apply that to our uh, data set. So I am seeing if it has CUDA or CPU, but you cannot put to device here. This doesn't work. So let me delete this here in the segment anything text so in this github repo it it shows you how to put it to device so you need to say dot half to cuda so i added this line here sentence splitter dot half to device and device will be picked automatically here it's cpu or cuda depending on my environment so now when i run it it will work splitting the first document into sentences I'm a bit confused because I don't know if uh, this is generator or list, but it doesn't matter for now. It will work uh, by the time you watch this video, this notebook will work. So yeah, this is the first document. 
uh, we, it has been split into sentences like this. This is showing just first three and there is 53 sentences. After that, if I scroll down, we need to install Sonar, which will convert sentences into vector embeddings. You can click this URL to read uh, README if you want, but it's not necessary, but uh, maybe it's good to check it out. But you can just follow the cells here without going to this URL. So this is from the README. We need to install this uh, package, this uh, fair sequence 2. So it's not fair sequence, it's fair sequence 2. Don't, uh, don't confuse those two. I had some issues because I didn't notice this, that there should be number two here. Okay, and uh, you should not have any issues, but here we are specifying CUDA version and stuff. So if you have any issues with PyTorch version, CUDA version, you can copy the issue into ChatGPT and you can copy maybe this readme and you can figure out how to install correct CUDA version, but uh, it should work uh, because Google Colab is going to be the same environment uh, for you as well. But anyways, if you have some issues with CUDA or PyTorch versions, you can just ask ChatGPT or Claude, how can I see my PyTorch or CUDA version? And then go from there, copy these errors and stuff and uh, read which version you need to find here, which version uh, your package needs. And you can just copy this readme, to, maybe Claude can help you find it. Then if we scroll down, we need to in pip install sonar dash space. So it's not pip install sonar. This is this would be a different package. We need this package, Sonar Space, as they explained here, somewhere here. They explained that this is the package. So I installed that as well. And then we can test it. So this code I copied also from here, here. First, we have these two sentences. My name is Sonar and this one. And if I just run it, we see that we actually got two sentences. So we got this tensor of size 2024. So two sentences, each having a vector 1024. If I go ahead and uh, write or output this, so these are the sentences, but if I output embeddings, it will show you just both of the vectors. So this is the first vector and the middle part is truncated. And this is the second vector, second sentence. So this is what we will pass into our AI model. Uh, note by default that sonar modules are loaded at CPU device, which is relatively slow. If you want to use GPU instead, you should provide the device argument when in initializing the model. Uh, this applies to every model. Similarly, you can pass D type argument. For example, here, device and D type. So I added this part here and we already have device automatically uh, calculated because you run the cells before hopefully or you can just uh, code it here as well okay i pasted it here so we will calculate device again so i had bunch of issues by trying to connect the entire pipeline entire workflow without even making sure each part works separately so now that I implemented these sonar embeddings, uh, it actually works. Ignore these errors, it actually works here. So now I can convert these sentences into embeddings, but I will not implement, I will not connect it to my real sentences yet. It will be easy to do that. Let me focus on difficult parts. So uh, let me delete this. Uh, next, we need to convert this to this Sparket uh, file type. We, we will use that to let uh, our model train after we learn how this sonar embeddings work we will just now uh, save everything into these parquet files so it's easier for model to train and this these are faster files after importing these few libraries uh, this is very simple so first i want to generate some uh, fake data mock data instead of using our real sentences because it takes a lot of time to download and uh, encode them so i will just generate this is sentence zero of document one this is sentence one so generate 10 sentences put it into array very easy very simple and for each sentence uh, to gen generate uh, this embedding array so 10 sentences 10 embedding arrays so this will be for document one and document two so this will be 10 random uh, vectors with this size 
Then for our parquet file, we cannot have sentences in one document and then sentences in second document. Uh, we need to flatten it all into a single all sentences array. So single array for all sentences uh, in order to be able to create a parquet file out of that. So we will just go for index sentence embedding in uh, you can ignore this. This is just like uh, taking a list of sentences and list of tensors. So zip means we are going through these pairs and it will end as soon as one of these ends. So if one length is 10, the other 12, then we will just have 10 iterations as one of them ends. That's what zip does. It will just iterate. So we will append sentence to all sentences and embedding to all embeddings and then document ID to document and that's it. So we will have this doc1 10 times. So the first 10 of them will be doc1. So we know that the first 10 sentences are from document1. Uh, we will do same for document2. And we will just keep appending sentence to all sentences. So it will be just one array of sentences. So it will have 1D flattened structure, one dimension. And same for all embeddings. And then for documents, we will know that from 10 to 20, those will be doc from document two later, but it will all be in one array. So this will just uh, put the folder name and then the file name inside of that folder. So this will just append. Then we convert Panda data frame to this uh, uh, pi arrow table and then write the pi arrow table to a parquet file. And that's it then we can verify by reading a parquet read table and uh, we can show sh a schema and number of rows and then we can load it back uh, for use and then you can choose embedding array like this and so these are the outputs uh, and document one embedding vector one and that's it so that was it for data processing for my specific use case only a little bit in the beginning was about data downloading it was very uh, quick so you can use that one you can check other videos on my channel and see you next time